I'm Kendra. And I'm Rachel. And this week we're going to bring you the exciting premieres and returns on TV. Summer TV is really heating up. Uh, then we're going to have some Emmy talk if uh, Kendra and I are on the, we're on the Emmy board. And finally, a few quick announcements. Well, we want to tell you about all the premieres going on this week. So, Rachel, what's first? So, on Sunday night on A&E, we have the launch of new show, The Glaze. Let's check out a preview. There isn't much about murder I don't know. Or can't figure out. Right. You almost shot a mail carrier. Is still a crime here in Florida? I don't play well with others. I must admit, I can't explain. Wow. You don't know partner up? Considering what you did to your last partner? The Glaze, Sunday, July 11th at 10 p.m. 9 central on A&E. So as you can see, we have another uh, cop kind of show here. There's no shortage of those on TV, as you know. But I'm a little bit excited about this one, only because it's filmed on site in Florida and Georgia. It's called The Glades. I don't really think you can fake the Everglades. And if you didn't know this about me, I'm a natural-born Floridian, lived there for most of my life. So I'm kind of excited to see how the Everglades and Florida are portrayed. So Monday we have a big night on TNT. First of all, at 9 p.m. we have the return of The Closer with Kira Sedgwick, and this is the final kind of run for that show. It's not one that I ever watched, but I kind of regret that a little bit because I've heard it's really good, but it just, it's not kind of my <laughs> genre of show so much, but fans of the show I'm sure will be excited to see the last batch of them. Then, after that, we have the premiere of another new show called Rizzolian Isles. So let's check out a preview of that one. TNT Monday, July 12th. Jane Rizzoli, detective, tomboy, street smart. Why are you so interested in this case? That's need to know. Do you fed guys actually say that? Maura Isles, medical examiner, fashionista, just plain smart. Ted Bundy. It's five letters too many for that anagram. How do you do that? Two women, two styles. The optimistic people live longer. So she was a pessimist? One new reason to love Mondays. Rizzoli and Isles, series premiere July 12th at 10, right after the season premiere of The Closer, only on TNT. So, hey, what do you know? Another uh, cop show, except the spin on this one is it, it's a detective paired with a medical examiner. So, uh, again, I'm not actually that excited for this one, and I'm a little bit concerned that this one is going to be able to find an audience. I'm just, I'm not entirely sure who it's going to appeal to. I mean, the leads seem perfectly charming, but they're not so young that I think young people are going to watch it, and I don't know. I just, I don't know, but... Maybe you guys want to check it out. So that's Sunday and Monday. Kendra, what's on the rest of the week? On Tuesday, we have the premiere of White Collar on USA at 9, followed by the series premiere of Covert Affairs on USA at 10. So let's check out a preview clip of that one. Are you okay? I'm fine. Stapler accident. What does we call it? Thursday at the agency. You work for the CIA. From the producer of the Bourne Trilogy. Get her out of there. This is a weird place to work. Covert Affairs. All new episodes Tuesdays at 10 on USA. Characters welcome. So as you can see, Covert Affairs looks like a fun new spy drama. And I think this one will set itself apart by, uh, it has a pretty excellent cast, as you just saw. And also it's from the producers of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the Bourne Trilogy, and The O.C., which is not a spy drama, but was fantastic. So um, also, I, since I watched the pilot episode of this one early from USA, come check out my full premiere review on the Covert Affairs page embedded on the show page. At, on Wednesday, we have the season premiere of Psych at 9 p.m. on USA. And then on Thursday, Sci-Fi has its premiere of Mary Knows Best. So if you guys didn't know, last week the Emmy nominations were announced, which we're really excited about. So we wanted to share with you a few of the nominations if you hadn't heard, and then give a little bit of our take on them. So first up, let's check out the uh, comedy nominees. The nominations in the comedy series category are Curve Your Enthusiasm, Glee, ah, Modern Family, <laughs> Nurse Jackie, The Office, and 30 Rock. 
So I'm really happy that first season show, Modern Family, which I think everyone recognizes was fantastic, made it on there. Definitely. I still love 30 Rock. I think that's continued to be consistent. I really enjoyed the last season. And Curb Your Enthusiasm, even all the way in its seventh season, I thought had a great season. But if I were on the Emmy board, I might do a few things a little differently. I really thought the last season of The Office was probably the weakest one yet. So I definitely would have pulled that out of there and subbed in one of a number of options. I thought Parks and Recreation was superb in its okay. second, second season. I think, honestly, I think it was my favorite comedy on that Thursday night lineup. So I would have loved to have seen that on there instead of The Office. Uh, also, Nurse Jackie, well, the truth is I don't actually watch Nurse Jackie, so maybe this isn't fair. But I would like to think in my head that a few other comedies might have deserved a spot on there a little bit more. Uh, these are, of course, both deceased comedies now, but Better Off Ted, the uh, quick second season or first second season combined kind of all air within the span, I think, of this year's Emmys. But it just was so clever and kind of different. And also Party Down on Stars, which we now yeah. know is also canceled. The second season in particular, I thought was just hilarious. So I kind of would have liked to have seen either of those on there. It has to say something that Rachel and I are enormous TV fans and neither of us have bothered to watch Nurse Jackie and I haven't really heard anyone rave about it either. So I would say both Party Down and a bunch of other shows probably deserve that spot more. So yes, that's how we feel about comedies. Uh, now what about drama? So here are the drama nominees. The nominations in the drama series category are Breaking Bad, Dexter, the Good Wife, Lost, Mad Men, and True Blood. So I'm thrilled to see Breaking Bad, one of my absolute favorites in there, and Dexter, while I'm still catching up on the last season, I completely believe it belongs to be there, and Lost, I'll leave it there because it's the final season, might as well give it some awards or nominations at least, and Mad Men as well. But honestly, I, would, um, I wouldn't mind replacing The Good Wife for Sons of Anarchy. I'm completely surprised that Sons of Anarchy didn't get nominated for anything. It was probably one of the most fantastic dramas ever last season, and it didn't get anything nominated. So I put that in instead of The Good Wife, which I did watch, and I completely quit because I got very bored with it. I did too. <laughs> and as far as the best actresses for dramas, I would replace Mad Men's January Jones, who really, like, she sits around and she sighs. She's cute. And I have to say, ever <laughs> since her Saturday Night Live hosting uh, performance, I just oh. have less respect for Me her too. as an actress. Agreed. <laughs> so if instead of her, I would put in Sons of Anarchy again for Katie Seagal, who had an absolutely amazing season. And I mean, on that show, she's fantastic. But last season had some real struggles for her character that she did very well. So I would completely switch them out. And for as far as actors, Matthew Fox, a little bit like January Jones, he's just kind of there. <laughs> you know, They act like he's the main character of Lost, but I was not that impressed by his performance this last season. And I'd much rather put in Terry O'Quinn, who plays John Locke. He had a, he had a challenging season, in my opinion. So finally, for a few quick announcements. Uh, so last week we passed 14,000 Facebook fans, which we're very excited about. So thank you for all uh, giving us our, your support on Facebook. And if you haven't, come like us on our Facebook page. Yes, I'm starting to feel that 20,000 is within our draft. So exciting. <laughs> And uh, finally, don't forget about our ongoing showdown at www.sidereel.com slash underscore showdown. We're still looking for the fall shows that you're most excited about. We're still, if you've been checking out our posts on the site, Alex, of course, Sidereel Alex, has been giving previews for some of the new shows each day of the week. So we still want you to keep coming back and checking out the new fall shows and voting for the ones that you're most excited for. That's it for this week. As usual, come visit us on Twitter and Facebook. And don't forget to vote in that showdown. We'll see you next week.